So far, we've been looking at management of our ESX hosts from only within the vSphere client to one ESX host. Well, what if we have more than one ESX? What if we have a bunch of them? It would not be very convenient to be managing all of those ESX hosts on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So you want to change one ESX host, you create a vSphere client connection to that host. Would not be very effective. The other thing is that vSphere has lots of power when utilized within vCenter. So vCenter is going to give us the things like HA and DRS and vMotion and even rapid deployment of VMs. We're just going to get more power, more functionality, and the ability to be able to manage more than one ESX host at a time. So what we're going to do is install vCenter server onto a server 2003. Now the machine I'm going to use for that is actually a VM. So let me go take a look at the VM where that VM lives. So that VM is vCenter and it lives on this VMware workstation. But you know, we really don't need that information to complete what we're working on. It's just useful knowledge. But I came to this vCenter settings and I mapped this CD to it where the VMware infrastructure manager is actually at, the ISO file where we're going that we're going to use to install vCenter. So I'd click open there and make sure it says connected. So click OK. Now I'm going to use remote desktop to connect to this very server 2003 box. And the IP address is 10.1.1.2. So when I connect to it, here it is. And now we're going to install the vCenter server. The vCenter server is like just about any other Microsoft installation. We're going to just right click on the CD, click explore, and run autorun.exe. That's going to fire up this vCenter installer so that we can do the installation. There are more options here than what we're going to use right now. Right now I just want to install vCenter server, so I click vCenter server, and now I'll click OK. Um, this process is going to bring it into the system so that we can get the vCenter service installed. Now there are lots of services that vCenter is going to bring and they're all Microsoft services. And we will look at each of those after we get it fully installed. Another thing is we're going to use vSphere client to connect to this vCenter server just like it was another ESX host. The same vSphere client. When we're logged into the vCenter server, you don't even know immediately that you're something different than what we were, that you're doing something different than what we were doing before. You're just going to be logged into the vSphere client, connecting to an IP address. A key difference is before we were logging in with root because we were directly logging into the ESX host. Now we're going to be using administrator because we're logging into a Microsoft box that's running the vCenter service software. So we'll go ahead and click next here and agree to the terms and we need to put a username and an organization. So I'll do Wade Philly and organization myesx.com. Now if we have a license key we can go ahead and put it in right now but if we don't we can leave it blank and it will basically give us the eval version just like it did with ESX. So we'll click next. Now, we require SQL Server. We talked about that in class, and the SQL Server is there for the vCenter service to maintain all of its updates and all of the host records and, and the logs and the activity of vMotion and DRS and all of that is stored in a SQL database. Now, it's not a wise choice for production to use this Microsoft SQL Server 2005 Express, but it works perfectly for class. Um, the biggest thing is that it, it has a limited size database, so it can't do well in a large environment. At one point, VMware was actually recommending that it's okay to use for up to four ESX hosts. But in reality, you don't want to use this version for production use. You want to use an extended database, an existing database running Oracle or SQL. And we'll be talking about that in lecture, which ones are best to use. So we'll go ahead and click next here. We're going to use again that SQL Express, but you don't want to in the real world. Now, what, what permission or authority do you want to use for us to run this service? Well, the easy answer is to use system account, and it's going to have all of the authority that it needs. 
But if you don't want to do that, you can actually create a username and password that can be used for this. I'm going to leave it a system account and really it poses very little security risk um, to doing that. So we'll go ahead and click next. And because we're running vSphere and vCenter version 4.0, we have the ability of, of having a fault tolerant vCenter server. This vCenter service is so critical to our environment. If it were to go down, lots of things couldn't happen. DRS wouldn't work. vMotion wouldn't work. HA will work if it's already set up, but you can't set up HA without the vCenter server. So we can install one vCenter server as the primary, and then we can come behind that and install a secondary vCenter server as a backup, and it's called linked mode, and it shares information between the two vCenter servers. Now these are the ports that we're going to need open. If you have a, a, a vCenter server talking to its ESX host, you want these ports between the vCenter server and the ESX host. Hopefully your vCenter server and your ESX host are in a network together, may be protected from, from outside of that area by a firewall, but hopefully they're interconnected. But here's our port 443, which is just standard SSL, right, HTTPS, port 80, UDP 902, that's a heartbeat, 8080, 8443. We also have the LDAP port of 389, which is plain text, and the secure port of 636. That's for communication with Active Directory. We'll go ahead and click Next and Install. This installation routine is going to run and it's going to complete the installation so that we have the ability to manage this vCenter server from a remote station. Again, we'll use vSphere Client, we'll connect directly up to this, and we'll be able to manage it once this is completed installing.